um, from the tiny little um, porpoises, like the vaquita, which is the smallest one, at only 1.5 metres. Unfortunately, it is critically endangered. There's only a few hundred of them left in the Sea of Cortez, up to the absolutely huge, largest mammal, which is this one, the blue whale, which goes up to 33 metres and weighs about 200 tonnes at its full weight. It is so huge, in fact, that an adult male elephant can fit on its tongue. If you're not sure how big that is, a whole football team can fit on its tongue. So as I said, these are seagoing um, animals. So they're in the animal kingdom. Of course, they have the uh, uh, chordata or backbone. Um, they are mammals that live in the sea, which is a little bit unusual. And their order, a scientific collection, is cetacea. But in that order, there's also two suborders, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about them because it's really fascinating. So the first ones we have are the tooth cetaceans, often referred to as dolphins, and they are the onodontocetes. This is a common dolphin, uh, one of the uh, smaller um, true dolphins. These um, have teeth. They um, go for individual prey, such as fish and squid, but they also work socially to corral the prey, bring it up to the surface in the huge bait balls, kind of blue planet type thing, where you get everything else joining in and taking advantage of their hard work. They um, have a great um, adaption to living underwater, where um, light doesn't travel so well, they use sound. So what they basically do is send out clicks that then um, are come back to them and map their environment. Very similar to um, another uh, animal, bats that fly in the dark. They're using echolocation, or as we call it, sonar in the water. And they force air um, down through the blowhole, whoops, which goes to the uh, phonic lips here. Um, and it produces a click that's then um, made a larger sound by this melon organ here, sent out, it then returns through the lower mandible, through the auditory organ and up to the brain. The second click goes out about 80 hundredths of a second later and is then compared to the first to give them an idea of distance, size, density, etc. And then we have the baling whales. This is the head of a fin whale. They're called the baling whales, or Mr. CG, because they have baling plates, which we can see here, which is this fringe-like thing here. And Mr. CG actually means moustached, and you can see why people called, it, um, called these animals this. This acts like a sieve. These animals take in water, and this subs sieves out all the tiniest creatures in the ocean, which they mainly feed on, as well as some fish. These are really the huge whales. So these are the um, larger whales that go up to um, 33 meters, like the blue whale. So we have the largest animals in the world feeding on some of the smallest. One way they do this is what the rorquals do. And we um, only have the rorqual whales um, in European waters. And they have these huge throat pleats here. And these are muscular, so they can um, expand and contract they can expand to take in huge amounts of water, and then they can contract and force that water through the baling fringe. The food gets stuck. This is a bit disgusting. The whales then excrete a mucus, which then, um, when they've contracted the water, takes the food, and they just swallow this big sort of bowl of mucus and um, plankton, etc. All these animals are of um, conservation concern and have various status on the red list of um, their um, level of being endangered. But the main threats are the ones here. And as you can see, they are mainly man-made. So we have whaling at the top, fishing, which includes the um, collapse of fisheries, the depletion of fisheries, which affects a lot more than just the whales, but also the bycatch from the fisheries as well, which is the incidental, accidental catch of these animals, mostly accidental. <laughs> They're also used to um, find some of the fish as well. Then we also have um, pollution, which could be chemicals, plastics, or acoustics. There's the incidence of ship strikes. And then there's also um, global climate change, which is affecting the planet and many species. But the one I'm going to concentrate on today is the top one. And that's because we are going to a country that is still uh, participating in uh, whaling. This is the global catch of just the baling whales. So if you remember, they're the ones with the moustache. 
the ones feeding on the tiny creatures. And as you can see, there's a huge peak up here as um, the um, technologies increase in ca um, their capacity to catch things increased. Um, and um, that really um, stopped and dropped off again in the 1970s when the moratorium on whaling came into place in about 1986 fully to prevent the countries from whaling anymore. The main reason this happened is because these animals take a very, very long time to reproduce. They may only have one calf. They provide um, care for that calf for a very long time. So they don't increase very rapidly. So if we're then whaling, it will take them a long time to recover. And many populations of these whales have still not recovered from the 1970s, 1980s moratorium. But some countries opted out of this and continued with what they call scientific whaling and also the traditional whaling. Note this does not include the dolphins or the toothed cetaceans. So if we included those, such as the pilot whales, these figures would, of course, be a lot higher. And these are the um, figures that are collected by the International Whaling Commission. So <clears throat> this year um, was a very scary year because they wanted to bring back commercial whaling instead of the scientific whaling. This fortunately collapsed, but there was a deal.